has done. All right, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna let it keep playing after this because this is the, um, the, the culmination of Atsukovsky's. Um, he basically like figured out the physicality of what the ether is, you know, based on the experiments that were done and stuff. So he, at the beginning of this, he gives this really awesome, um, brief on on how science works in Russia. So you're, you're never gonna believe the process that they use over there. Like, so whenever they examine a new theory or like when they're gonna put something forward. He said that they get everyone together, like all the top minds that are like, you know, in support of it and they battle it out like in a debate and like the best stuff that does that, you know, that makes it through is like the stuff that they move forward with and they, and they like actually critique stuff and tear stuff down. So like, remember when I was looking at, um, uh, Galev's, <clears throat> um, ether experiment and then like, but it was published in that book or whatever. And like part of it that that lady went super hard on uh covariance or whatever and just body bag you know like how stupid it is like that, that they try and <laughs> pretend that it's that it's meaningful when it is expanded to everything so if everything is covariant then nothing's covariant you know and it's That's just like the theory of relativity thing again yeah. like relative moral relativism coming in again yeah exactly exactly so um so yeah they go hard on it over there and this is you know this guy put in a ton of work on this and like you know went through all these interferometry things and and you know actual experiments where they've you know measured you know whatever the fuck and uh this is the deduction of that so he's going to go over like the density the pressure um the sound <clears throat> the sound uh the sound velocity and second sound velocity you have to listen to that again to get that but yeah we got the mass diameter pressure like how it affects like yeah check that a lot of uh, analysis of the contribution of all the all of the Russians. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I'm going to just breeze through the the important ones. Okay, so this is parameters of the ether. The first one is density. The density here, I don't know if you can read it, is uh, 10 to the minus 12 kilograms per meter cubed. Now that's wow. an incredibly small density. All right, so this is as thin as you could get, let's say, without being zero. So the ether is very very thin. <laughs> It's right, ethereal, you'd say. Yeah. Next, we have <laughs> pressure. The pressure is 1.3 times 10 to the 36 newtons per meters squared. Right. Uh, what is atmospheric pressure? About 10 to the 5. Okay, so this is 30 factors of 10 bigger than that. So the ether is incredibly thin, but with in enormous pressures. Enormous pressures. Far beyond what we experience on Earth. Even at the, depth, the bottom of the ocean, it's nothing like the pressure of the ether. So why don't we all collapse? Well, the same Ether reason is nature's the pressure mediation. Dude, right? It, it's almost as if, you know, there's uh, some sort of harmonic resonant frequency and pressure mediation within that medium that, you know, facilitates all motion. Dude, ether has to exist for pressure mediation to take place. That's why that, that's why there's that enormous disparity there. That's uh, interesting. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. water, because the pressure inside is the same as the pressure outside. And the pressure in space is the same everywhere. Uh, the next thing I want to look at, okay, the temperature is less than 10 to the minus 41 Kelvin. Well, that's as close to absolute zero as you, as you can get. That is the, co the coldest possible temperature in the universe. Okay, just a tad, below, a tad above absolute zero. The next one to look at is sound velocity. And I'm going to look at the second one first. There were two uh, velocities that uh, they found. One was the one that traveled at three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That should sound familiar. That's the speed of light. All right, so the ether- Shoot, that... hold on, I got distracted. I have to listen to that. They, they took it in miles per hour to meters per second. That's how they trick you. They do different units, <laughs> so you don't notice this thing. Hang on, what happened? That's such a big deal. I was reading something, what happened? Second velocity of sound is actually just a different unit measurement of the speed of light. Which completely makes makes sense when each um, note in a scale has its own color and its own frequency and its own shape, everything. So, yeah. What the fuck? And All eventually, right. if you keep going up in the frequencies, you end up in the light spectrum. Yeah, you know what? It doesn't make sense if a bunch of intersecting particles bouncing and intersecting with each other are nothing over infinite distances. <laughs> Sounds oh, crazy. Wait, 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 wait. Particles that may or may not be Exist, intersecting yeah. <laughs> because they're in a probability cloud distribution where they they may or may not collapse or interact or do anything or exist at all. So I don't Yay, know. mainstream. This is what you guys actually believe. Someone put that disclaimer in there. Right, yeah, on. man. No probability <laughs> clouds here, boys. We got straight uh measurements allegedly, you 
know, what, of what it could possibly be. Okay, just a tad below, a tad above absolute zero. The next one to look at is sound velocity. And I'm gonna look at the second one first. There are two uh, velocities that uh, they found. One was th one that traveled at three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That should sound familiar. That's the speed of light. All right, so the ether that they measured was supporting a sound velocity. That is the ether itself could move at the speed of light. That was one velocity. In other experiments, they measured a the sound velocity of 43 times 10 to the 23, an enormous speed. Okay. So they're talking about like sound, right? I think he's talking about the speed of the ether. Like, so if sound can move through ether at that speed, then effectively the ether is moving at that speed. I think that's what he's saying. Yeah. So that, okay. So two different velocities and one matched what they say is the speed of light. And then the other yeah, one was way faster. I don't know how they got such so really? giant differences, though. I don't know how that works. Oh, wait, I, if this... Yeah, I think that was what he was saying. That Essentially, you can do the math to calculate the speed of the ether by the measuring, or maybe I'm thinking of a different part, but he was talking about how you can kind of do the math to deduce the speed of the ether by using the speed of light and then you know, I guess you would kind of just have to shoot it in the direction that the ether is going, right? <laughs> just no, I'm not shoot him, I'm, shoot I'm him in to, there. <laughs> I'm going to have to email him for a clarification on that one. Speed of light is 10. Yeah, of, I, I might be thinking of a different part of the presentation. Well, we don't know anything about how those things were measured. He just said they did two experiments, and one found it super fast, and one found it the speed of light. We don't know anything else, so. Yeah. This is, this is uh, oh, 10 to the 15. 15 factors of 10 bigger than the sound, than the uh, speed of light. Now, this would explain the objection of the mainstream. They claim that, okay, if the universe is rotating in a fixed ether, then how do you explain the stars? They should be traveling much faster than the speed of light. Well, the reason that they can travel faster than the speed of light is that the ether in which they move is moving at 10 to the 23 meters per second. All right, so the claim that the speed of light is a limit is not true for ether. Light may be limited to C, but the ether apparently has no limit, or if it if it is, 10 to the 23 oh. meters per second. Oh, that's what he's saying. All the right. ether has no limit. Wow. I so, mean, conceptually, it's just so much more sound than anything in the Einsteinian paradigm. Yes, 100%. <laughs> Yo, double entendre for you. <laughs> Like, it's so funny because, yeah, I feel like he's saying so much that we've, like, kind of come to assume ourselves. Yep. But he's in, like, a different paradigm, but it's yep. just it's just still a better paradigm. Dynamical viscosity. I want to see what he says about that. Yeah. It addresses <laughs> the objection that the stars could not possibly move beyond the speed of light. Well, they can't because the ether in which they're, they're embedded is moving at that speed. Now, what is the temperature? Uh, should I do that? Uh, viscosity is interesting. The kinematic viscosity is 10 to the 9. That means if you try to stir the ether, there's a lot of resistance. Okay? 10 to the 9. Dynamical kinematic viscosity, viscosity means, though, that when it moves, it's got 10 to the minus 2 resistance, which is very low. Oh. Okay? So if you try to stir it, so it puts the up So the difference a lot of between the ether at rest and the ether in motion. What else do we know about that, boys? Well, no, I have no idea. Like I'd have to look at where I have to look at how this is talks about it all the time. He's like electrostatics oh, is the ether under torsion and the ether under stress. Yeah, That's exactly. the force of electrostatics it's coming up. It's a wave. When it's but at rest and when it's not or a wave to occur, those things. Well, so occur. viscosity is like thickness and friction, and he says kinematically. So like when it's still and you try to move it, it resists like a force of nature. Yet when it's in motion, it moves with what agility and grace, like yeah. beyond what you would expect. That that's crazy. But once that is. it's moving, it doesn't it doesn't uh, rub against other parts of the ether and slow down. No friction. Well, it does, right. but very little. Uh, the rest of the stuff we can ignore. Now, Atsukowski has a model for ether, which consists of two states. You can have uh, a free ether or unbound, 
which means that it is uh, far out in space, right? It's not near any mass. There's no uh, electric charge around. It's uh, free. He claims that there is also a bound state of ether in which if the ether starts to rotate and forms, let's say, a ball, a globe, or it could form a donut, a torus, or any other uh, shape that's consistent mm. with rotation. He said this bound state he called AMER, A-M-E-R, and it has the property that each one of these little particles has a mass of, hold on, 10 to the minus 114 kilograms. Okay, so that's uh, that's a one followed Your by particles. 114 zeros divided into one. Yeah. So what he is describing here with these aimers, right? So, you know, in quantum physics where they're like, hey, there's this like particle that may or may not exist. Who knows, right? But it's some sort of modality of the ether based on a fluctuating charge know. potential. So, but what that means is uh, there's a little tiny vortex that's created. And what he say, what this mass is, what this, the, the length of this mass is, it's just a little tiny vortex. So when you get into Maxwell's equations with, uh, what's his name? Hertz's modifications to that so that they could describe the central centripetal convergence and divergence of the toroidal mm -hmm. field. Uh, when they brought that in, they were able to describe uh, a vortex properly. And it turns out a vortex, uh, because the ether is like a gas or whatever, you know, with this like uh, thin viscosity and all that shit. Um, it, a gas in a vortexual motion is the only thing that could form a physical part of like what they what they're saying is like a physical particle, right? So like as it's manifesting, as that energy fluctuation or motion or whatever is going through it, it's like physically manifesting like like that you know the modality of the ether is changing, right? Based on motion. So vortex mass. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, exactly that, right? Three six nine to that's a vortex well, no, mass. No, no, no. This is well, like, watch. Yeah. Well, like I don't know about the three six nine vortex math thing, but the this it forms this. Hmm. You see? Oh, okay. Yep. There you go. I've seen the, that on. Nice. Um... nice example. Damn. Okay. Usually, when they show uh, vortex math, um, they show that two two D one. This is yep. a much better demonstration. Yep, for what I'm for what we're trying to see, it's exactly what I wanted to show, right? So it's a it's a extrapolated 3D model, right, of the vortex math that goes back and forth. It's essentially like this thing, like Shout extrapolated. Out this is what this is what Tesla said. Yeah, was exactly. Universe. Exactly, but he's talking about it in a slightly different oh, nature, very, I think. Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> slightly, slightly different, funny. but same 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 shape. Yep, <laughs> same That's shape. The shape the math describes. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Dude, that's fuck that's badass so um so yeah that, that's what they're that's what As asutovsky was uh talking about in this book that's what he was describing with that so like when there's motion and like the ether is like manifesting into a particle or whatever um that's it's starting from this vortexual motion described you know through the centripetal convergence and divergence uh, of maxwell's equations all right cool all right, so an incredibly small mass. And the theory is that these masses can coalesce, can combine to form particles that we're familiar with, like electrons, protons, neutrons, and all of the things that, all of the particles that have been identified. So again, just a change in the field. Doesn't necessarily have to be like, the, you know, an electron that you could like hit a baseball bat and like knock an electron out of the park or something like that, right? But what's creating a change in the field is a vortex is forming based on you know, excitation within the medium. Mm -hmm. Fired uh, by physics in the, uh, the uh, particle smashers. Okay, how small are they? Well, the diameter is 10 to the minus 45 meters. Incredibly small. Well, if they're incredibly small and very small mass, the number in a unit of the volume must be enormous, and it is. It's 10 to the, looks like 102. All right, again, 10 with a 102 zeros. So there's a fantastic number of these aimers in this model that uh, is in every cubic meter of space. Uh, the rest of the stuff, I don't think. What I, what I think that is, dude, is he's just taking like, hey, in uh, quantum physics, they're saying this for their heliocentric model based in nonsense pseudoscience. Here's the actual real time interpretation of that, you know, extrapolation. Yeah. So I think he's making like the geocentric comparison for the new nonsense that you're describing with the tiny, 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 right? 
Yeah, so that's what Asuk- Atsukovsky's uh, book was about. Like, So a- he's going through like actual experiments where they have like an actual measurement of something and they can extrapolate, you know, information from it that's not um, based on, you know, the bending and warping of space time and, you know, fictitious stuff like that. And they just like re-examined it and, you know, just uh, applied like, you know, what they're, what could actually be going on with it. And this is where all this, you know, come, this is like the end result of, of what he uh, culminated out of that. That's cool. I didn't read any of that. I'm glad that I was able to discern that from the bottom of a chart. Yeah, absolutely, bro. <laughs> Dude, I'm glad I read uh, what I read out of that book because it, it all came, <laughs> like it, it was all related. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was all super related to this. And that's actually how we found my YouTube channel. <laughs> So without that's shout out to Atsukovsky and his research, bro. Nice. I know because I, I have the only English copy of the book. And I translated it with AI. Shout oh, out yeah. Alan's it's presentation, like Ether Roundtable number four. Yeah, it was four. Nice. Okay, we get to the MMX. First Oh, okay. Oh, this so, is where you like double body bags into ferrometry. Yeah, so then he just starts sweeping up interferometry, dude. So, oh, it was so we, so 